Antonio Tom. Yeah. So hello, welcome to the Mathematics Unity Review hosted by the UP Mathematics Club. So in this part of the review, pag-uusapan natin yung continuity of functions of several variables. So in this part, may dalawa problem tayo yung discuss Pag-uusapan natin kung paano natin intindihin yung problem and kung paano natin siya itatakal. And along with that, pag-uusapan din natin kung paano natin ma-solve na maayos yung problem natin. So, before proceeding, i-off ko siguro mo, muna yung mic ko to, to save data. So, ayan. Let's proceed. So, before diving in to the problems, mag-recall muna tayo ng concepts from the lecture. So, this is from lecture 1.2. Uh, i-recall lang natin yung definition ng isang limit along a curve. So, kung, if you let C be a smooth curve, that passes through the point x0, y0, then we define natin yung limit ng f of x, y as x, y approaches x0, y0 along c as follows. So notice na may dalawang cases tayong kinoconsider. First, if c has the equation y equals g of x, so yung ginagawa lang natin ay substitute natin yung y with g of x as, um, as indicated dito. So yung y dito papalitan lang ng g of x. And then, kung, kung mapapansin nyo, yung limit natin, we let x approach x0 na lang. So, para na disregard yung y since, um, I think, para na na-incorporate na yung, na-incorporate na siya dito. So, take note then na x0 dito is the same x0 na nakalagay dito. So, yan yung x-coordinate din uh, sa point na kinoconsider natin. So, for the second case, yung equation naman natin ay x equals g of y. So, kung ganun yung uh, ganyan yung case natin, yan equation natin for C. Yung ginagawa lang natin, uh, very similar lang sa ginawa dito. So, we'll, we, we just substitute x with g of y. And then, this time, y will now approach y0. So, again, uh, yung y0 na yan is the same as the y0 that is indicated here. So, baka nagtataka kayo kung bakit kailangan natin i-recall yung definition ng isang limit along a curve. So, again, from the lecture, uh, kailangan natin siya para magamit yung theorem na to. So, this theorem will tell us kapag kung paano natin malalaman na hindi nag-exist yung limit ng isang function uh, as x, y approaches a, b. So, ayan, uh, naka-state sa theorem na if there exists two distinct, take note, dapat distinct siya, distinct yung paths ng c1 and c2. Tapos, uh, sa case na to, kapag hindi equal yung limit, ng function natin along C1 and C2 or kapag yung limit along curve natin hindi nag-exist and ayan, important din natin i-consider na yung curve dapat nag siya sa domain of F so yung C1 natin and then yung C2 natin dapat yung equations nila ay nasa domain of F so isabihin yung curves na yan ay nasa domain ng F so kapag ganyan yung mangyayari uh, what this tells us is that the limit does not exist. Okay, so ngayon mag-recall naman tayo. Kung kel i-recall naman natin kung kailan na yung continuous yung isang function at a, at a certain point, say a, b. So take note na meron tayong tatlong conditions. And then yung conditions na to, very similar sa definitions natin ng continuity from math 21. So first, f of a, b must exist. And then, pangalawa naman, dapat yung limit nag exist din. And then, yung third condition naman natin, dapat yung limit na yun, yung limit, na, yung limit ng function natin as x, y approaches a, comma b, dapat equal siya sa f of a, b. So, remarks, if one of our conditions in the definition fails to hold, kahit isa lang sa kanila kapag hindi mag-satisfy, then f is said to be discontinuous at a, comma b. So, kapag may discontinuity naman tayo, meron tayong dalawang types of discontinuity dito. So, pwedeng either removable discontinuity or essential discontinuity. So, removable yung discontinuity natin kapag discontinuous yung f and then yung limit nag exist Tapos, kapag hindi naman nag exist yung limit, then we can classify the discontinuity as an essential discontinuity. Okay, so we're done recalling the concepts. 
So, uh, mag-proceed naman tayo sa first problem natin. So, here we consider the function g of x, comma y. So, notice na yung function natin ay isang piecewise function. And sinasabi niya na if x, y is equal to 1, comma 0, then the value of our function is just 1. However, if x, y is not equal to 0, then the value of our function is defined by this expression right here. So, we need to determine the points where g is discontinuous, if, if there are any. And then, kapag may discontinuity naman, kailangan natin classify siya as either remo removable or essential. So, notice na since piecewise ngayong function natin, um, kailangan alam natin kung alin dito yung gagamitin natin to find the limit. So, recall muna natin yung definition natin kanina. So, yung first condition, kailangan mahanap natin kung ano yung f of a, comma b. Yung second naman, kailangan mahanap natin yung limit. And then, yung third, uh, titingnan natin kung equal or hindi yung limit yung limit and yung function natin evaluated at a comma b so at this part bibigyan ko muna kayo ng counting time to process may idea na tayo regarding discontinuity and kung kailan naging continuous yung function natin so pag-isipan na lang muna natin ng mabuti So hopefully at this point, may idea na kayo kung paano natin i-approach yung problem or hopefully na-solve na nyo rin yung first problem natin. But in any case, well, let's proceed. I-discuss na natin yung problem. So, una, kailangan mahanap, nat kailangan mahanap natin yung value ng function natin evaluated at the point. So dito, yung sinasabi niya na at x, y equals 1, 0. Uh, ito yung value ng function natin. So, technically, this will be the value of f of 1, comma 0. And then, second, kailangan mahanap natin yung limit. So, yung limit natin, yung gagamitin natin, ay yung expression na to. So, yung reason for that is that for all points where x, y is not equal to 1, comma 0, ito yung making graph ng function natin. So, ayan. First, we take note that yung limit ng function natin uh, yung expression na to. So, recall na that we use this expression right here. So, the limit of this expression as x, y approaches 1, comma 0. So, in this part, uh, yung first na gagawin natin ay try muna natin i-simplify further yung expression natin. So, as you can notice, we can express the function, uh, the expression rather, as follows. So, kung ganyan, uh, pwede tayo mag-cancel out. So, this part right here will cancel out. And then, we are only left with this expression. So, kapag mag-evaluate na tayo, substitute lang naman tayo dito. So, we replace, we substitute all x's with 1. And we substitute y with 0. Kaya yung makuha nating result is 1 minus 1 squared minus 0 squared. So, this is just equal to 0. And then next, by definition, uh, we recall naman from the piecewise function kanina na g of 1, comma 0 is equal to 1. So, mapapansin natin na 1 is not equal to 0. So, yung function natin or yung g of 1, comma 0 is not equal to the limit of g of x, y as x, y approaches 1, comma 0. So, since hindi sila equal, hindi na satisfy yung third condition natin. So, ayan. Since nag-exist naman yung limit, uh, we can say na removable yung discontinuity natin at the point 1, comma 0. So next, proceed naman tayo sa problem 2. So sa problem 2, uh, piecewise function pa rin siya. So we let h of x, comma y be equal to 0 if x, comma y is equal to 0, comma 0. And then kapag hindi naman, uh, it is defined by this expression right here. So we need to determine if h is continuous at 0, 0, and then if discontinuous naman, we need to identify the type of discontinuity. So in this part, pwede siguro natin gawin, um, I mean first thoughts pa lang. We might think na uh, itry natin satisfy muna yung conditions. Well actually yun naman yung gagawin natin, pero notice na 
kapag mag-substitute tayo dito, let's say, itake natin yung limit nito as x, y approaches 0, 0, uh, yung making result niya is just um, 0, 3 times 0, times sine 0, which is 0, and then all over 0 plus 0. So, basically, 0 over 0 siya. So, in a way, para mahirap siya. And then, in this part, um, siguro pwede natin itry, i-apply dito yung limit along a curve. So, uh, i-recall lang natin kung paano, and then, i-evaluate natin kung nasa-satisfy pa rin yung conditions natin for continuity. So, again, at this point, uh, pwede nyo i-try, i-solve muna yung problem, and then, pag-isipan na mabuti, and then, after, mag-proceed na tayo sa pag-solve sa kanya. Hopefully, you try to solve the problem, and if hindi naman, okay lang din as long as you have an idea kung paano natin siya ma-approach. So, ayan, let's proceed. So, for the solution, we first take note that h of 0, 0 is equal to 0 by the definition of h. So, this is very clear from the definition of our function kanina, since piecewise function nga siya. So, Dito, ma na napakita natin na we already satisfy the first condition ng continuity. And then, sa second part naman, uh, kailangan muna natin malaman kung nag-exist nga yung limit natin. So, with that, pwede gamitin natin yung epsilon delta definition to prove na nag-exist nga siya. Pero baka mahirap, so let's try using yung theorem na na-recall natin kanina. So, itry muna natin pakita na hindi nag-exist yung limit natin. So, we first consider the curves c sub 1 and c sub 2, where c sub 1 is defined to be y equals x, and then c sub 2 naman is defined to be x equals y squared. So, yung importante lang dito ay kailangan alam natin kung ano yung equations na gagamitin natin, or rather kung ano yung curves na gagamitin natin to show na hindi nag-exist yung limit natin. So, again, recall na kapag uh, yung mangyari ay same lang yung limit along let's say c sub 1 and c sub 2, then it is not enough to show na nag-exist ng limit. Baka may iba pang curve dyan na hindi pala same or hindi pala nag-exist yung limit dun and ayun, hindi pala siya existent. So dito, um, let's try using y equals x and x equals y squared. So we first consider c sub 1. So we have the limit of the function along c sub 1 is Ayan, uh, take note na yung gagamitin natin expression kanina ay yung condition where uh, x, y is not equal to 0, 0. So, along c sub 1, kaya nga substitute lang natin yung y with x. So, lahat ng y dito making x, and then we let x approach 0. So, may kita natin yan dito. And then, next, uh, ilalabas natin yung x dito, so that pwede tayo mag-cancel out. So, simplifying, we will have 3 sine x squared all over x plus x cubed. So, kung i-try natin evaluate yung limit at this point, may kita natin na 3 sine 0 squared all over 0 plus 0 cubed is just 0 over 0. So, since ganyan yung form ng expression natin, or yung limit natin rather, then it signifies na pwede natin gamitin yung L'Hopital's rule. So, recall na yung L'Hopital's rule, kinukuha lang natin yung derivative ng numerator natin, tapos kinukuha lang din natin yung derivative ng denominator. So, ayan, kapag kinuha natin yung derivative ng 3 sin x squared, it will be 3 cosine x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, kaya naging 6x cosine x squared yung numerator natin. And sa baba, it's very clear naman na yung derivative niya ay 1 plus 3x squared. So, take note na kapag mag-evaluate na tayo ng limit dito, it's no longer equal to 0 over 0. Rather, it will be equal to 6 times 0 times cosine 0 squared all over 1 plus 3 times 0 squared. So, dito it's 0 times 1 all over 1 plus 0. So, 0 over 1 na siya. So, ayan, evaluating further, the limit along C sub 1 should be equal to 0. So, tingnan naman natin yung limit along C sub 2. So, recall na 
along c sub 2, kailangan palitan lang natin lahat ng x with y squared. And then, yung y naman, ipa-approach natin to 0. So, we see that here. So, take note then na dito we substitute x with y squared. And then, uh, yung pwede natin gawin ay simplify further. So, we have 3y squared sine y squared all over 2y squared. So, ayan. Uh, simplify lang yung denominator. And then, next, since, ayan, pwede nga tayo mag-simplify ulit. Uh, mawawala yung y squared dito and then y raised to 2 na lang yung matitira, na, matitira sa denominator. So, it's very clear here. So, let's try evaluating again at this point. Kapag mag-try tayo mag-evaluate, sine 0 is just 0. Tapos, 2y squared where y equals 0 is also 0. So, 0 over 0 yung form ng limit natin, uh, yung expression natin dito. So, pwede natin gamitin yung L'Hopital's rule. So, kunin natin yung derivative ng numerator, derivative ng denominator, and we'll end up with the limit of 6y cosine y squared all over 4y as y approaches 0. So, pwede tayo mag-cancel out ng y dito. So, take note pala na importante na simplify muna natin yung expression natin before evaluating further. Kasi baka uh, maging common mistake siya na for example, kapag evaluate natin to immediately, uh, makuha natin 0 over 0, baka mag tayo ulit. And then, uh, yung mangyayari, magkakamali na tayo. So, always simplify muna. Always simplify the limit first before evaluating further. So, ayan, after simplifying, since nag-cancel out na nga yung y dito, we'll only end up with 6 cos and y squared all over 4. So, evaluating at this point, we'll end up with 3 over 2. So, clear naman siya since cosine 0 is 1 and then 6 over 4 is just equal to 3 over 2. So, uh, dito makakonclude na tayo that the, the limit does not exist. Yung reason kung bakit hindi siya nag-exist is that hindi naman same yung limit ng function natin along the curves c sub 1 and c sub 2. So, since hindi siya nag-exist, uh, masabi natin na h has an essential discontinuity at 0, 0. So, ayan, I think this is the end of this review, of this part of the review, rather. So, hopefully, may natutunan kayo, and hopefully, uh, may wasan kayong malito sa pag-evaluate ng, uh, sa paghanap ng, or sa pag-determine, well, <laughs> pag-determine, rather, kung continuous or hindi yung function natin and yung classifications ng discontinuity. So, recall lang tayo ng mga concepts sa lecture, intindihin na mabuti yung problem, and then, eventually, uh, makahanap tayo ng magandang ways to solve the problem. So, see you in the next part of the review videos.